started now. All right. So Arno says he's in transit. He should he should be joining. Um, uh, so um, uh, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are. Um, Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, welcome to 2017. Um, so up for the, our agenda today, we have um, a vote when we reach quorum, hopefully we reach quorum, uh, to, uh, on the cello proposal that Bawa had submitted. Um, we tried to bring it forward before the end of the year. We didn't have quorum. Uh, again, hopefully we will reach it today, and if not, then I promise this time I definitely will send an email. Uh, I was supposed to do that last time. Uh, hi, Mick. Uh, we have uh, a draft document for the technical working group in China, um, and so Bawa, I think, will be presenting that, assuming he's on. I think he's. I think I saw him on. Um, uh, discussion yeah, yeah, of... Please. I'm here. Great, thanks, Bawa. Um, a discussion of the uh, core infrastructure initiative security badge. Uh, I did some research before the holidays, and so I can report back on where I think we are um, as far as that is concerned. Um, Todd will give us an update on the Hackfests, um, and uh, then we'll have a little bit of a discussion of monthly project updates, and I'll explain what that's all about. Um, and uh, and then uh, I'd like to have a discussion of communications tools. There's been a request for Gitter and a few other things, and I just want to sort of reset where we were um, uh, as far as something to replace Slack um, because we don't have a paid account, we can't archive and so forth. So we'll have a little bit of a refresher discussion. Um, uh, just a reminder, um, I had asked before the break that each working group, um, you know, based on discussion we had uh, that was uh, started by Mick, that really each group should have a charter, and, and so I proposed that everybody who is leading a working group come forward with a draft charter um, before next week's call. Um, and then just a reminder that there's an internship program, and if you're interested, um, I think, uh, was it Todd? Were you the one that was driving this? Uh, we'll just yep. do a refresher of that. So yeah. are there any other agenda items that people have? If not, then I suggest that what we do is defer the cello discussion until our no joins um, or, or part and, um, and let's go with, uh, Bawa, let's, uh, discuss the, uh, technical working group in China, um, uh, draft document for uh, recruiting people. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. And, uh, happy new year, everyone. And, uh, uh, first I ac actually, I saw, uh, Arnold has sent a, a email. Uh, he he he, wa he would like to uh, support the shallow proposal, and uh, uh, about the uh, TWGC work. Um, uh, thanks to the help from uh, from Brian, from Chris, and from all the uh, Linux Foundation guys, we have uh, uh, successfully set up the group uh, by uh, calling. Uh, now we have uh, seven volunteer members, and uh, we have uh, successfully uh, helped. Set, um, uh, uh, held the uh, meetup at uh, Beijing uh, on the uh, Christmas Day, and uh, uh, we will also uh, hold another meetup at Shenzhen uh, at the end at the weekend. And uh, 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 now, currently, we we are drafting the working guideline, and uh, hopefully, uh, we can uh, send it out. Uh, before the uh, next uh, TSC uh, meeting, as uh, uh, the our working group documentation, and uh, uh, also we we have uh, uh, successfully made the official announcement, and uh, we have uh, the kickoff meeting uh, just as uh, this week, 
and uh, we, we would like to uh, hear uh, more uh, suggestions from the TLC. Thanks. Okay, anybody have uh, any questions for Bawa? Or Victor, I think Victor's on as well. Uh, yeah, yes, I'm here. Uh, I, I'm just hoping we can approve the, we, we can get the uh, the doc for technical working group China get approved uh, as soon as possible. Uh, that's all. I don't have questions for Bawa. Okay. Um, actually, Todd, could you paste the link in since we can't click on the agenda? Um, so just uh, again, um, I don't. You know, I think it'd be fair to give the members um, uh, a little bit of time to review this, but um, I'd appreciate if the TSC members could um, take a look at. Um, the charter uh, proposal and um, and be prepared next week to approve it so they can move forward. Any other questions, comments? Okay. Um, we uh, are now at quorum, I understand, Todd, right? Uh, Hart joined. I saw him yes. chat in the type in the chat rather. Yes, correct. Uh, so we are at quorum um, and uh, so I think then it's probably appropriate that we take up the, the cello um, uh, approval vote. So before the holidays I had, we, we had had a couple of um, sessions where Baoha had presented the cello proposal. Um, there was a little bit of discussion about whether or not there was overlap with um, the uh, the blockchain explorer project and I think we've convinced ourselves that you know while yes there is a bit of a a dashboard aspect to uh, cello they're they're not really quite the same as the intention of the blockchain explorer but the teams should collaborate on uh, you know aligning things and so forth um, uh, we then tried to approve it but we did not have quorum uh, and so I had, I was supposed to send something out over the holidays, but I didn't. I apologize for that. Um, but I suggest that we take up a vote now on the Cello proposal to uh, approve it as a new incubating uh, project. Um, if uh, if there's any questions, concerns by members of the TSC, uh, you need a refresher or whatever on cello then I'm sure about what you know we've linked the uh, the proposal um, uh, link in the chat there but uh, we could always review that but I think we've been down this path a few times and it's probably appropriate now that we have quorum that we actually drive it to a vote so unless there's any objections or any questions concerns remaining uh, I suggest Todd that we take it to a vote all right, sounds good. Um, just walking through the list, uh, Ben. Ben, you may All right, be on. Yes. All right, uh, Chris. Yep. Dan. Yes. Hart. Yes. Mick. Yes. Morali. Yes. Sheehan. Yes. And Tamash. Yes. All right. Thank you. That passes unanimously. All right. Congratulations, Bawa. And um, uh, what we can do is I'll uh, have Rai set you up with a, um, a Garrett and GitHub repository and so yep. forth. Uh, okay. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Yep. Okay. Um, I have to go find my uh, agenda again. Uh, okay, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, next up is the discussion of the core infrastructure initiative security badging. Um, and uh, I had I had done a bit of research uh, before the holidays, um, and I actually sort of took the the CII security badge uh, test or questionnaire, if you will, 
um, to see you know where we um, uh, you know where we would shake out. And for the most part, I think you know most of the most of the items are you know sort of best practices. And in fact, I think uh, most of the projects that we have um, uh, ongoing here uh, in Hyperledger are you know by and large following uh, many of those practices. We do have to set up. Uh, you know, I discussed this with Brian. We do have to have our security ma maven onboarded, and we have to institute a um, a formal process for um, uh, reporting of uh, uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, you know, privately reporting vulnerabilities, and then you know, an appropriate um, uh, response and, and escalation uh, process for. Uh, remediating those vulnerabilities and and then you know announcing um, the patches and so forth. Uh, so we do have to put that piece in place. Uh, that's that's sort of missing. But a lot of the other stuff is you know do you have it in some sort of a um, source code you know uh, versioning system uh, yada 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 and 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 many of the you know the requirements I think are. Um, um, are, are well handled. There's a couple of uh, items that I think that we could do that were not required but were you know strongly recommended and those involve uh, doing security scans both from a code perspective as well as um, you know penetration testing and, and, and various other aspects. I think that you know um, certainly from a fabric perspective I can attest that we are doing those things, IBM is doing those things, and what I've been exploring on my end in IBM is uh, can we share those, should we share those, I think we should. Um, uh, and, um, and so I'm working uh, internally to figure out how we um, uh, can either incorporate the process into our continuous integration um, or, you know, we, you know, would probably do the scans on the open source um, and then uh, report back out. Um, uh, there is, uh, there was some discussion about incorporating, you know, actual uh, code scanning into CI uh, and, um, uh, but we need a tool for that. Uh, the tools that um, I have available inside IBM are not something that I can share. Uh, so we are going to necessarily, you know, if if we do want to in, in, in install something into CI, um, you know, in, into the Jenkins process that that can do code scanning, we're we're probably going to have to look at something that the project may have to purchase a license for. Um, there are, um, you know, open source code scanning capabilities. We could explore some of those as well, but um, it's likely that we'll want something a little bit more robust than that, and maybe Brian and. And Todd, I don't know what other projects at the Linux Foundation are doing uh, in that regard. I know that there's code scanning available for C++ um, that uh, the kernel team uses, um, but obviously that won't help anybody except the Aroha team currently. Um, uh, although I guess we could potentially use that for Aroha. So, so that's sort of where it stood. Like I said, most of it was motherhood and apple pie. Um, and I think that you know we're, um, uh, you know, we we have all the basics in place. You know, we have uh, source code management. We have you know Jira. We have review uh, with Garrett and so forth. Um, uh, we have a continuous integration pipeline that does the testing and so forth. So I think we're in pretty good shape. Um, and uh, like I said, we just need to get the security maven onboarded and get that process in place so we can get our badge, um, uh, from, at least from my perspective. And, and like I said, the, the, the source code scanning is, an, is an, an optional thing that you can do um, as part of your CI, um, and, uh, and so we can explore how we, how we proceed with that as we go forward. Um, any questions? No? Okay. Chris, uh, Ram, Ram here. Um, just wondering, uh, does it cover uh, actually a security review from an uh, from a, a system architecture and uh, uh, 
um, you know, the underlying crypto uh, as well, or was it mainly a code-focused uh, uh, review? Um, it was mostly code. I don't recall an architectural component to it. There was a recommendation on um, uh, on, on on dependencies, uh, certainly. Um, but I don't recall an architectural aspect to it now. Okay. That, that seems like something that would be important for us in particular to make sure that we have some means of reviewing as well. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Hart brought it up on the, on the chat window saying, you know, do we need a security working group or can we um, do this in uh, an existing working group? Uh, you know, I, I think it makes sense to make sure, uh, so, so we at least have a process by which we have the projects reviewed from, you know, are there, um, um, you know, some security issues with the, the uh, with the cryptos and uh, some, uh, yeah. are they susceptible to some threats, right? So, um, so but, I do think no, that I, you know, one of the things that I think would be important would be, um, and you know, it's it's a practice that I know that we do inside IBM is to get a full uh, enumeration of the dependencies, um, and then tie that into you know cert advisories and various other. Um, uh, channels for um, getting reports of potential vulnerabilities and being able to quickly identify that we have a dependency that has a vulnerability that needs to be remediated and so forth. Um, uh, we probably are going to want to do something along those lines. Um, uh, and, and, you know, I, I don't know if it's a working group. I know that the security maven, you know, is a high priority for Brian. Um, um, I, I don't know, Todd, if there's an update on where things stand from a hiring perspective, but um, once that individual is uh, onboarded, then I imagine that we would want to have some sort of, I don't know if we want to call it a working group per se, but a security um, response team that is both focused on, um, you know, helping to, to helping the security maven to implement and affect the um, the necessary response um, and and reporting uh, mechanisms, but then also you know implementing any tooling and whatnot that's necessary to um, ensure that we are effectively um, effectively so, covered. So, Chris, we were talking in the architectural group yesterday about you know doing the the sort of charter discussion and trying to articulate exactly what what role. Um, mm that group has, right, because coming up with the architecture is clearly a, a, a very optimistic goal. But what we wanted to do was to figure out how we could provide feedback to the different, how we could be a useful resource and provide feedback to the uh, mm -hmm. various projects. Um, would it make sense, and, and again, I'm thinking more from the architectural review and algorithmic review rather than from the, you know, did you make sure all your buffers were taken care of correctly, right? Um, and all your dependencies. Would it make sense to have, um, it, in some ways, to empower the working groups to be a kind of an almost independent review um, for the projects that we have inside the, the organization right now? Um, it, it, you know, could the architecture docu could the architecture working group is it is it an appropriate role for the architecture working group to be um, it, it simultaneously working towards um, kind of the idealistic architecture and at the same time providing um, deep review of the the uh, the various you know I'll say fabric platform projects. Um, does that make sense? And if that's the case, then that sort of implies a divide from security. security. Well, well, I mean, and again, I mean, maybe this is something that we should bring up as a topic of discussion when we talk about the, the, the charters. Um, but um, my, my thinking around the value that the architectural working group in particular can bring to the table would be to help us 
collectively the various projects that we have you know taking a look at you know at from an architectural perspective of how these things actually work and um, how they're organized and so forth from an architectural perspective to help us figure out how we drive potential consolidation how we can potentially um, you know evolve the various projects such that we drive um, potentially increased interoperability capabilities um, you know that we align ourselves a little bit more closely where it's relevant um, you know I, I think to your point Mick you know coming up with you know one architecture to rule them all is um, it's a bit of a stretch but uh, I do think that helping the various projects understand that if they were to you know just inch themselves a little bit to the left over here and another one would go a little bit to the right that they could actually get much closer aligned that you know we could potentially think about um, uh, having various capabilities or components you know shared amongst the different projects and so forth I, I think that's the real yeah. value Architecture. This wasn't. Yeah. I was not intending this to be a discussion of the architecture working group charter. What I was trying to come up with, Chris, is a way that we can meet the missing need for, um, a, call it peer review, um, but a deep peer review of the architectures for the components that are being pro uh, provided. Right. Um, so we can do security scans, we've got tools for doing that, we can do dependency checking and all of that. That doesn't mean that your algorithm is correct. Um, who's verifying that the algorithms are correct and helping us to understand um, uh, what the limitations are, uh, what circumstances it will, be, it will work and not work in. Um, it, it would be nice to have, you know, and, and we've talked about this with Sawtooth, it would be nice to have a interactive peer review group, right? Rather than dumping a paper out there and having people, you know, just blow it up or whatever, um, being able to have something that's an interactive group um, that provides that. And for um, our ability to address resiliency in um, the face of attacks, given the kind of software we're building, that peer review is critical. Uh, and I mean at an architectural and algorithmic level, not at a, did we include the right libraries and the secure versions mm -hmm. of the libraries. Mm -hmm. well, I, I mean, put, some, put some color on this. Uh, I was, we were discussing this yesterday. This is Vipin, by the way. Um, put some color on this. Basically, um, it is not one architecture to rule them all concept. It is basically on request from any project under incubation, we might, uh, the architecture working group might provide uh, some kind of a feedback to this. It is not a prescriptive thing at all. It is more uh, uh, so that we can collect uh, the thoughts from the main architects on the on the uh, you know like main architect of a particular incubation or the main architects of a particular incubation and then uh, sit down and talk about it and maybe have some uh, constructive session or even a constructive inter interaction about this that's one one thing the second thing is about the uh, security review security as you know is not just the architecture working groups concerned but it's also like for example identities highly uh, highly tied up with this so in those terms it makes sense to have uh, some kind of a sub working group like Ram is suggesting or a committee or something like that. I know that R3, for example, has architecture working group and every other group is like a sub working group of the architecture working group. And the way that that works is because because you don't have this heavy organization, a chair, a meeting every two weeks and so on and so forth. If, if there is a security a committee or a sub working group, then they can take that to the side and, you know, have more productive conversation, more uh, frequent interactions, and come up with some something more uh, beneficial regarding sec uh, security, not just uh, be a code-focused thing at all. Because between the penetration testing and a 
overall architectural review is where the attacks are going to come from. I mean, it's a practical thing, uh, uh, you know, in terms of the security uh, implications. Anyway, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, thank you. Well, so, so go ahead. Now, this is Leonard. I was just trying to say, no, that's certainly true what Vipin has just said. I mean, the architecture working group should always have oversight to all the different components that collectively make up the whole in terms of any solution and their dependencies. And therefore, security is overriding everything. So, yes, you could have a security subgroup and, and treat it more as a component of the solution because security is prevalent everywhere <laughs> and of utmost importance. But certainly the architecture group should have oversight and therefore that's the lineage, that's the linkages and the dependencies to ensure that everything is looked at as we've all just rightly said to ensure we have not just fit for purpose, but we, we, we maintain all the right standards as they change, as new ones become available to ensure that we have a very secure solution at the end of this in terms of frameworks, etc. So yes, I certainly agree with what Vipin's just said there and the gentleman beforehand. So I, I think it's quite similar to what we did last uh, summer, right, around a June time frame from Fabric point of view. So we came up with the uh, second iteration of the fabric architecture and we spent, I think, four sessions review with the architecture group. Uh, you know, certainly at first uh, we have to spend a lot of time on talking about the, in, in the details of the fabric architecture and spend some time uh, to, to educate the members of, of the group. But the feedback is quite uh, beneficial. Uh, to, to fabric. So I think that's what Nick is uh, trying to get to is that the function of the architecture working group is not only just coming to, to, to come up with a consolidated architecture but it's there to help reviewing the architecture of the projects um, in the community and, and, and we, we, we did that uh, without knowing that you know that's the, the right way to do it but you know we just tee that up to the architecture group and and drum and, and members, uh, you know, graciously taken that, that task uh, to review the, the fabric architecture back then. Yeah, so, so certainly uh, we, it looks like we're already having the architecture work group discussion as part of this. Uh, so uh, I think we uh, absolutely need to, um, to have the general architecture uh, uh, review uh, as part of uh, what we do uh, in the architecture work group uh, and, and you know looks like there's a lot of support for that uh, and I'm glad to see that but with, the, with with respect to the security review I'm not sure we uh, and which is you know the topic at hand I'm not sure that we we've quite done that yet in a sense uh, we covered the overall architecture and the decomposition and the interfaces and so forth um, and that was, uh, you know, a, a good two-way street in terms of informing what we do uh, when we develop the ideal architectural framework, as well as providing feedback to uh, the fabric project, right? But the uh, the thing that I'm not sure we have accomplished is a, a security review to see, um, you know, whether there are uh, security holes, whether there yeah. are any threats that we have not. Um, covered and, and we probably need to either recruit or actually uh, contract out or do have some method to have uh, security uh, audits and reviews done by uh, the, ex the experts who have that capability, right? Um, so, you know, it, it, I don't know how we're going to incorporate that into our overall process. Um, it's uh, well, an iterative process, right? It's an iterative process, meaning it does, it's not yes. just done uh, once and everything is over. Um, because, for example, Fabric has made some significant changes since our uh, since our uh, initial uh, discussion. Um, and you know, don't you think it's appropriate to uh, revisit some of these things? Some of uh, you know the the current architecture uh, and then have another session you know in other words 
it doesn't get it doesn't end with just one especially if there are significant changes <clears throat> yes so, uh, yes I, 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 I agree with with that uh, I try to do that last uh, time that we are we have face to face there as part of the update but certainly not enough time there we didn't have a, an architecture breakout session there to uh, to continue uh, regarding security, yes, that's another thing that, that we need to, uh, to bring up to the community about from a fabric point of view. Uh, we want to have some kind of uh, technical report on that uh, to, to, to be written, uh, not, not there yet. Uh, we do have some experts uh, internally trying to, to do that and to create that technical report. Um, so you know, once once we have that, uh, it's uh, it would be uh, would be good to bring that up to the community uh, for the review. Um, depending on you know how we want to do this, if there's a security working group, uh, that would be great. Otherwise, I would start with I, I would bring up to the architecture working group first, and then we can go from there. Um, you know, certainly identity is part of that as well, and. And uh, you know, Chris and and Vipin been asking me for a time to to review that with the uh, with the working group, but uh, we have not been able to to do that just yet. I I think toward the end of January would be a good time for us uh, as we uh, completed you know our coding at that point. I think that's great because we could have, we could take baby steps and have something called, say, a security subgroup that reports directly or works very closely with the overall architecture working group. And therefore, it's a responsibility because time is of the essence. The number of resources we have working on the different projects in different groups is very tight, very slim. But that focus on a security subgroup, which is closely tied, to the architecture working group might, might work because then it can look at all aspects of security across all the incubation projects and come up with a pretty good standard as to how things should move forward. And as we go ahead, we can improve on that. So baby steps first, we set something like this in place, we see how it works and we learn from that and that's the whole purpose of our meeting. So no, that should be good. Thanks. So, um, I I, I would say, let me, let me just say this, I think that, you know, as has been noted, having a sort of a peer review function as being something that the architecture group can do and can offer the various projects uh, under the Hyperledger umbrella is a good thing. And as has been noted, projects that have done this have benefited from the feedback that they've received. I'm a little bit reluctant to turn it into some sort of a gate, um, uh, only because, uh, I, I, you know, again, we're, we're this is an open source initiative. Projects are roughly independent in terms of their operations. You know, they may not get a badge, right? Um, if they aren't, you know, doing all the CII security badge requirements, then they wouldn't get a badge. So it's not like we're going to do this once and all the projects get done. Uh, you know, I think that each project is going to be responsible for uh, getting its own security badging. And there's a function of what we can do from a, you know, from a Hyperledger perspective that, you know, like I said, like the security response piece, um, <clears throat> you know, that and, and potentially some, some of the CI stuff that would have to be, you know, provided by the Linux Foundation itself. Uh, but the projects are somewhat independent. Again, I, I think it's a good thing to offer peer review capabilities. And if teams, you know, projects want, as, as the Fabric has done and as Sawtooth has done, to bring their architecture uh, or their architectural proposals to the architecture working group and have them uh, discussed and reviewed and, and, you know, feedback provided and so forth, I think is a good thing. Um, I think that the TSC function is more along the lines of saying, look, if you want to have, you know, um, uh, you know, the support and approval of the TSC and moving forward and, um, and so forth, then you, you need to be able to, you know, you need to be this tall, right, to, 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 to get on the ride. And, you know, for the architecture working group to really uh, be establishing the set of criteria 
that they're looking for. So are you, you know, do you have security scans? Do you, you know, those kinds of aspects I think are important from an architectural perspective, uh, more so that I think than having a, a work group that then has to do all the work um, involved in that, if that makes sense. Um, I, I do think that again, the TSC, the role of the TSC is to set the guidelines for how the projects would operate not to be the ones that control the projects themselves. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, and in fact, Chris, none of us were proposing it as a gate. Yeah, well, I, I, um, but I heard, I, I, I heard we'll sort of authority over uh, and, and various other... No, 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 no. No authority. Advisory. Right? I, it, the, the, the piece that's missing, <clears throat> the piece that's missing for most of us right now who are building this is an independent advisory or peer review group that can give us feedback that we can, that positive constructive feedback that we can incorporate into, use to modify and make our projects better. Um, this is a community. Um, it, you know, it, the community can provide through the expertise, it, it, it is an incredibly good and um, uh, strong intellectual community in this space. Mm -hmm. Tapping into that expertise so that this feels like a community providing some services to a bunch of, of projects, each one of which is trying to address a different set of requirements. That seems like something that this community could very actively provide and would be an incredibly valuable resource for all of us. Um, I, and, and again, like Ben, I will say that having the opportunity to present some early designs for some of the work that we were doing in Sawtooth and getting feedback changed the way that we did it. Um, and, and we need more of those positive constructive opportunities rather than, I mean, we can all go out and, and put something on ePrint or whatever it is. And, you know, 99% of the feedback is just going to be hack and slash um, and not useful. Um, mm -hmm. But having the architecture group here um, as a way for us to, um, uh, and, and I'm saying architecture working group, but I'm saying, it, but really identity, um, the usages, whatever we do for security and architecture, all have tremendous benefit in providing um, a community, a positive, constructive community feedback for all of these projects that we're working on, and and trying to tap into that seems like a, a good thing. And yes. I don't, no one is proposing gates or things like that. I mean, that that is clearly not going to work. Um, but taking advantage, finding ways to leverage the expertise in this community seems like the best thing this group could do. I, I completely agree, and so does my dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Give them a have, treat and say hello. <laughs> <laughs> very, very intelligent dog you have, I guess. <laughs> if the dog agrees, so, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm hearing two things. One is let's kind of maybe in general make better use of the working groups to to help bring new ideas and proposals through them for for the community feedback that they provide. And then specifically with with the CII topic, um, would I guess be the notion of maybe running through some of the CII criteria. Um, within one of those working groups before a project self-certifies um, to put that uh, to put that badge URL in their uh, project readme. Yes, I think I agree one with that. So, yeah, so so for on the latter topic, uh, uh, Dan, um, it seems like on, on the CII badge requirement, if it doesn't already have uh, a, a security review from an architecture and, and crypto algorithms perspective. Um, maybe well, what we should do is come up with uh, with some kind of subgroup or independent group which is responsible for that and incorporate that into uh, the requirement for getting a badge for any hyperledger project. There, that 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 would be my thinking on that. And uh, I, I, and I agree with what Nick was saying earlier. Um, Chris uh, and we're all on the same page. We don't want this to be a gate, but we want to find some way of encouraging all the projects to kind of um, move towards, evolve towards the kind of ideal architectural framework we are coming up with, right? And we want to encourage, nudge the, uh, nudge the projects to go in that direction. And 
Um, you know, so far that has happened in an ad hoc informal way because uh, folks like Mick and Bin and others uh, have been active participants uh, in the architecture work group and that's what's made this an effective work group, right? But it's uh, now the question is by offering the review uh, option uh, to uh, the different projects and kind of, uh, uh, you know, encouraging them to participate actively in the architecture work group can we kind of make that happen, um, you know, uh, for all the other projects as well. If, if we could take a step back for a second and look where we want to end up. Um, we've talked about doing architecture reviews, algorithmic reviews, things like that, but with this being new technology, do we need a team looking at potential vulnerabilities that don't, you know, we don't know about yet versus buffer overflows, things like that, you know, where, Exa you know. Ex exactly. You know, it's, 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 it's doing the security review to find out if there are vulnerabilities that are not addressed, right? So, and uh, so typically in an, uh, in, in, you know, in academic setting when you, uh, kind of uh, publish a new proposal, it gets peer reviewed by other security experts to see whether, you know, there are other threats, you know, there's ex explicit uh, modeling uh, to identify vulnerabilities and so forth, right? So uh, we have to find a way, and I'm not sure we have all the expertise to do that within our existing community, um, and so that's why, uh, you know, I was alluding to, you know, we probably need to bring in a process and some expertise to make sure that we can do a good job at that. Yeah, that, that is true, but I think within our own house here, we have the makings of, I would say, um, some form, some degree of strength where we can structure how we approach the projects in terms of architecture, the dependencies, and oversight. So architecture must always have oversight over everything that eventually becomes a solution, whether we're talking about um, frameworks. Frameworks are some form of solution with standards included within that framework. So this is a good start for you putting together. And yes, we can augment that with additional external, you might say, expertise or oversight um, at some point in time. But I think the way we're headed, and as several of you have said in the past, we have been moving that way, and I think that's a good that's a good approach overall to have that level of, of oversight and ensure that security. There is oversight at an architectural level to look at any gaps, any threats, um, not just now but future threats because things do change over time. Um, so we can look at things and see how we can address and the roadmaps we can put in place. So no, this is a very good discussion. Thank you. So 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 I was on mute unfortunately, and I, but. He, he, Here's what I would suggest. So, so I think you know Mick and Rom. What, I, what I'm, 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 I think we're we're in agreement as to sort of generally what we're trying to say here. I think as part of the discussion to come up with a charter proposal, that if we can factor in this notion of providing a peer review, peer review, you know, if 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 there's an, if, you know, if 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 the if the team thinks that. You know, providing some sort of a carrot or stick is appropriate to encourage the various projects to come forward and do an architecture review. I suppose I'm kind of I'm more that if there's real value in it, they will come, right? Uh, and that it's more of a marketing thing to you know to get others to recognize the value in having the peer review. I think this discussion alone has been helpful to to share and spread the word of. You know, with the feedback from both Mick and Ben on the value of having gone through this this process um, uh, over the course of the past year, um, I think formalizing that as a function that the architecture working group can provide is a good thing, and so I would I would encourage that, um, and uh, uh, you know, and so rather than sort of dwell on this anymore, I think we should. Defer it to the the charter discussions that we'll likely have over the course of the next few weeks. Um, uh, so, I, like I said, just factor that into the charter, and then let's let's pick it up from there. Um, I guess uh, just very quickly because we're running out of time here. But Todd, you want to just give us a quick update on the upcoming hack fests? 
Yep, uh, certainly. So for February, we uh, our events team did a, a lot of research and uh, ended up landing on the same place that we were at last time in San Francisco. Uh, so it's going to be uh, in the Presidio again as well. Here's the registration link uh, into the chat window. I'll also send out an email after. So that will be February 1st and 2nd. It's directly after the Coindesk Construct Conference uh, happening the two days prior. Um, I will also send out a draft agenda. So if you have any topics that you want to see uh, during that, uh, get those slotted in, please. Uh, from there, um, we are tentatively looking at doing a Hackfest in March in Shanghai uh, in tandem with the Hackathon that's going to be taking place there. Um, more details to come soon on that. And then lastly, I think there was some discussion around potentially doing a Hackfest in May uh, in New York. Um, that is very tentative at this point. But if there is interest or if any of those on the line have uh, venue space that we could use, uh, please get in touch with me and we will continue tracking on that over the coming weeks, uh, you know, just as part of our goal to get these planned further uh, as far out as possible. And, and just, Todd, a reminder from the Shanghai perspective, there's a hackathon um, that would be either before or after the tentative hack fest. Correct. Um, similar to what happened in Amsterdam. Um, the hackathon is being, um, I think, sponsored by IBM and Wanda and maybe Huawei, I think. Um, and, uh, and that's moving forward. Um, so there's an opportunity to, you know, uh, just as we did in the past, to have some of the members of the, uh, the Hyperledger projects come participate um, either as um, uh, coaches or judges um, and uh, or participants in the hackathon uh, I think would be a, a, a good opportunity. I know I, I got a lot out of the, the one in Amsterdam. So do we have a set date in March yet or, or not? I'm sorry, Ben? Do, do we have a date in March yet or, or not yet? Uh, it's still tentative. Um, I uh, I believe I uh, that there are dates for the hackathon. I can try and get those and send them just so the people know. Yeah, I'm March tenth and eleventh is the current. Sorry, eleventh uh, uh, and twelfth is the current working uh, 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 date for the hackathon. And so the Hackfest would be uh, as close as possible to that. Uh, there, the few days before or after. Okay. Hi, and this is Victor. Uh, I want to know uh, whether Wenda has sponsored the Hackfest. Uh, for I know I know they are working on the Hackson, but I don't know uh, if they are you know, going to take care of the Hackfest also. Uh, if they are not working on this, uh, we are happy to provide the places and uh, our help to organize uh, hack zone, uh, hack rest. Okay, so Todd, I think you can follow up with Victor after the call. Yep, Victor, I'll send you an email right after this. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Thanks. Um, so. Uh, project updates, I, I, I hinted at this before I sent a note. Um, uh, I, I think so, so. One of the things that I have to do, and I think Dan, you know, gets roped into as well, is providing an update at the end of the month that says, you know, what happened in Fabric or Sawtooth and the TSC and so forth. Um, uh, I can speak, you know, to the um, to the TSC and to the Fabric, and I, like I said, I usually have to reach out to Dan to provide some input from a Sawtooth perspective. And now we have Aroha and potentially soon Corda. Um, uh, and so it's, it's getting a little bit out of hand. I cannot provide complete oversight of, uh, of all the progress that was made in all the different projects that we have. Um, and so what I'm going to request is that the project, uh, the various project teams, Sawtooth, Fabric, Blockchain Explorer, Aroha, uh, and now Cello provide monthly updates on uh, you know, what progress has been made, uh, you know, what major, um, you know, milestones were reached and so forth. Just something brief, a paragraph uh, is, is more than sufficient um, on, uh, on anything that they would like to share with the broader community. And what this will do is 
um, this will go into a newsletter that the Hyperledger, um, uh, Jessica of the Hyperledger staff puts out um, uh, on, at, at the end of every month. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to request that, I guess, you know, at least for now, it would be uh, Makoto and Dan and myself and Bawa and uh, who's Explorer? Um, probably Parda. Um, provide uh, a monthly update and um, uh, again they can share the load with others on their team but um, that's going to be something that I'm uh, I'm going to ask for and I think it I think it's uh, I think again it's a good opportunity to sort of help to spread the word on the the work that you're doing um, and on the value and, and, and benefits of, of working in this in this community um, and so unless there's any pushback on that, and I hope there isn't. <laughs> uh, otherwise, you're just going to have no, uh, there's not going to be anything about your project in the uh, monthly update. So um, uh, finally, then, there's the, commu the, 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 uh, the communication tools discussion. So um, we had talked last year about various alternatives to Slack. Um, you know, we tried, um, was it, um, not Confluence, what's the? Discourse. Can't remember what it was. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, and then that really didn't pan out effectively. Um, uh, we obviously cannot afford um, a uh, a paid account for Slack. I think that's in the two to three hundred thousand dollars a year range. That's kind of ridiculous. Um, so we need an alternative. Uh, I think Brian, you had suggested Rocket Chat might be an alternative. It's a sort of a Slack uh, uh, alternative, but you can host it locally. Um, and um, I think that over the holidays there was a bit of a ball dropped. I asked Rai to sort of check back with the IT team on the prospects of hosting Rocket Chat um, uh, from IT and what that would cost and so forth, and bring that back. Um, to this group, and then obviously to the board if it's going to cost us some money. Um, uh, but I think that's really our, our best alternative at this point. Now, somebody had made a request for Gitter, which is another Slack um, wannabe that plugs into uh, GitHub. Um, the problem, of course, is that without a paid subscription to that, you're not going to get any archiving either. You're just going to have sort of the same problem that we have with Slack with 45. No, actually, it's 4,900 people now, uh, <laughs> all trying to communicate in the same Slack, and you basically have two days worth of history uh, before stuff falls off the edge of the world. So, um, uh, just a reminder to Brian and Todd and and, and Ryan, the team, if we can um, pick that ball up again and, and and move forward on trying to get Rocket Chat hosted and so forth, that would be great. we Will do, Chris. IRC is definitely an option, Balwa, but we would have to set up some sort of archiving for that as well, right? So, um, uh, and publishing and, and so forth of the, okay. the logs, but it, the is, it, is, it is an option. I mean, definitely, I mean, tons of teams use it. Um, it's not as slick as um, Slack, so to speak, um, but it it is a, it is an option. But it um, uh, it would mean that we would have to have almost a, a project team working on integrations and so forth, um, and, and we don't have that currently. Uh, talk just 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 a consideration. I have a thought, really. Uh, what some tools are currently existing in some of our op corporations like IBM and uh, Linux in terms of communication tools and possibly the ability to have free storage um, on a server somewhere within that. And, um, and because this is part of the Linus um, Foundation, um, not leases, but we <laughs> create us uh, some space and some process and technology technology to maintain uh, communications um, tooling and the data, the documents that go along with it. Just, just a thought. I'm not sure what's available, but that will fly. 
and therefore we, we, it would be almost at zero cost to uh, to the well, Linux that's, Foundation. That's, that's basically, Leonard, that's basically the rocket chat. Um, uh, you know, okay. It's a matter of hosting it and then providing the storage for um, the archives and the history. Oh, um, that's good to know. Thank you. Yeah. So we're about end of job. Are there any other agenda items? Todd, you want to put in a last pitch for the internship program reminder? Yeah, uh, no real updates. It's something we're working on behind the scenes right now just to formulate. Um, so we hope to get this up uh, early this year. Um, if you are interested in being a mentor for an intern, uh, just get in touch with me so we can track on that uh, so that once we launch the program, uh, we have a bench of people uh, that we can connect with. And in the minutes that go out, I'll just include a link to the overall Linux Foundation internship program uh, that exists across a variety of the projects that we host, uh, just so folks can get a better sense of what that will look like. Todd, I suggested I'd like to help with the mentorship uh, program. However, could we put together a high-level list of responsibilities so that we're all aware of what it is about, what it will entail, and therefore the resources and the time, the time effort that might need to be <coughs> sort of put into this, uh, just to give us a fair idea of really what that undertaking is about. Uh, absolutely, that that's exactly what we're developing right now. Wonderful. Okay, thanks everyone, and again, happy New Year, and uh, look forward to a very productive and exciting 2017. Thanks, guys. Uh, thanks to all of you. Uh, make the whole year be very successful for all of us. <laughs> Happy New Year. Have a great day. Cheers, everyone.